bring you for the news. As Hello and welcome uh, to our journey on technology and diplomacy. My name is Jovan Kurbalia and um, I will uh, guide uh, you through this uh, interesting journey, relying a lot on your comments and suggestions. And this journey is uh, very interactive. Thus, uh, please use the chat uh, feature as the questions make your comments. We started last month with outlining the main uh, paths on the, this journey, mainly the question of uh, interaction or interplay between diplomacy and uh, technology in general. Our main objective is to see how we can uh, feature or how we can position our current era and our current time in the long history of uh, diplomacy and technology. There is one personal aspect in this journey. I used to live in the country, former Yugoslavia, where people in the matter of five years, from people with compassion, love for each other, living together, turn into the enemies. For those of you who follow the developments in the Balkans, you know what's happened. And when you analyze the history of the Balkans, you realize that there are these occasional waves of people living together, creating something new in arts, in science, in sports, and then sliding into the conflicts. Therefore, there is a personal element. Throughout my professional and academic career, I've been trying to answer myself very simple question, which is behind diplomacy. Is the question of conflict really typical uh, hardwired in our nature? Or is it the question of the specific context? Now, good news is that uh, when I started discovering and searching for the answer in the 90s, I realized that many people before me uh, tried to answer this question. And the main dilemma was between two school of thoughts. We can call one school of thoughts, which, which is Hobbesian school of thoughts, which argues that humans are by their nature egoistic. They just fight for the propagation of their gen, uh, genes and they are trying to essentially do it at the expense of the fellow humans. The other school of thought, which we can associate by, with Rousseau and a few other uh, thinkers and religious history argues that humans are cooperative beings. They live uh, with uh, each other. Uh, I'm not, I cannot be myself without you. You cannot be yourself without people in your surrounding, whether it is a family, professional network, and society. Therefore, that element of cooperation of people living together has been extremely important. Now, this question of my personal interest in the issue also brought me to the professional focus, especially over the last, let's say, 10 years, where this view, that Hobbesian view, that we are really prone to conflict, starting sliding the overall discussion. And basically, this is in the realist, it's called the realist theory in international relations. It argued mainly that uh, uh, the, it's a given fact that we are really ready for a conflict and what we as a society have to do is to create institutions, rules in order to contain our problematic nature. In addition to this general discussion, which you are following in newspapers, in elections worldwide, in political dynamics in society worldwide, came also the question of our digital and AI future digital technology and in particular artificial intelligence has developed very fast. And we are now in uh, uh, what is called the axial period, 
trying to see to get some sort of social contract, not necessarily signed on dotted lines, but social contract as understanding what will be our core values and priorities for time ahead, where we'll have a new competition by machine. Therefore, this is a broader context of this journey and inspired by great thinkers like Churchill and others and politicians, arguing that if you want to see forward, you have also to look in the reverse and see what has been happening throughout the history. And this is this historical journey. Yes, today we will be discussing prehistory, but we will be also bringing the building blocks for discussion on our future. And let's now dive deep into the prehistory, the birth of diplomacy and early technologies. One caveat before we started moving uh, through, through this interesting and exciting uh, phase in the history of uh, humanity is to important to define what is diplomacy. It is uh, diplomacy understood with the lower case D. This means diplomacy as a collection of tools, ways of peaceful resolution of conflicts between different groups, not necessarily in the family. In family, we need a lot of negotiations and we need a lot of empathy, but it is between different groups. Today, those groups are national states uh, organized in the United Nations, but throughout the history, there were tribes, clans, uh, uh, empires. Diplomacy with the uppercase on capital D is institution of diplomacy, which will be reflecting as we are moving closer to our era. This is United Nations, this is a question of protocol, negotiations and procedures. But let us start with the lowercase d uh, when we move through the prehistory. The key, key question is, what is the starting line up to the starting line of diplomacy? When did diplomacy, diplomatic practice start? What was that point? Now, let me just disappoint you. Uh, we are not in position to answer it with a really precise date. But we can provide the building blocks for our discussion today and in the coming months about the moment where the all elements of diplomacy emerged. Some people jokingly say that the diplomacy competes very tough for the status of the oldest uh, profession. Apart from this um, questionable joke, uh, diplomacy is really, as you will see, very, very, very old profession. Now, uh, there are two elements and two narratives, and I will ask my colleagues to play just this video, which our AI team developed uh, as uh, their understanding of the encounter of our far predecessors who basically came together and, as you will see, tried to resolve the conflicts. Over to you. <laughs> Poor chap uh, uh, survived this encounter and probably he was one of the first uh, diplomats whom we can uh, relate, uh, relate to. But let me now bring the bit of controversy. This was how our AI team essentially uh, depict this interplay with, uh, with, uh, with diplomacy. But uh, there was also, and I'm trying now to get back to this element of sharing, there was also uh, the other aspect, uh, which was argued by Frank Deval. Frank Deval is one of the leading uh, primatologists uh, uh, and uh, researchers who argued that diplomacy started long, long time ago and uh, the Tower of Fa um, um, predecessor from the animal world uh, basically developed some sort of forms of, of, uh, of diplomacy. Let's see what uh, Frank Deval uh, tells us. He, in the interview, which I strongly advise you to, uh, to uh, read, he argued against uh, this situation from the video. Frank Deval said, I don't think diplomacy is a human invention. 
the human inventions come in when you talk about the language that's being used, one highlight language, and the proposals that are being made, but the process itself of bringing parties together who do not want to be together unnecessarily, I think predates our species. And if you just search for Fran, uh, you can see uh, on, the, on the internet, you can find really impressive TED talk where he shows directly how, for example, chimpanzees had a feeling of fairness, empathy, and all the other uh, building blocks for, uh, for real negotiation and diplomacy, key elements uh, of diplomacy. Therefore, the beginning of diplomacy can be even traced back into animal kingdom even before arrival as, uh, as humans. This is the first question which we should keep in mind. Now, as you will see, one fascination of the discussion of prehistory that you easily, easily uh, sweep over the millions of the years, thousands, hundreds, and uh, there is a need to have some sort of bearing about uh, this period. We decided at the end, and I'm sure that it will be questioned, and please go ahead, that uh, we can trace back the uh, emergence of this proto-diplomacy about 100,000 uh, years BC. If you want to put it into time perspective, and if you take that the history of humanity between 100,000 BC and today is one minute, uh, the latest period which we study heavily in our courses uh, between Vienna Congress and the present time, when diplomacy, institutional diplomacy more or less emerged, is less than one second. There was 60 seconds, one minute, the history from the, from the origins of language and speech, and less than one second, our latest period, last, uh, last period with, uh, with the two centuries of developments of diplomacy that we know in the, in the current, uh, current uh, form uh, as uh, organized interaction between states, basically. Now, back to years. Here is uh, some sort of mapping that you get the bearings of the year, starting with 10 million years ago till today, and important uh, parts, uh, uh, early apes, important gorilla uh, split, chimpanzee split. Fran Deval studied a lot chimpanzees, and he, he has uh, this elements of chimpanzee diplomacy, if we can say in this way. Then we have earliest bipedals, which I cannot use today due to the, due to the accident I had recently. Development of stone tools and Austra, uh, Australopithecus, who developed uh, not in Australia, but, uh, in Africa, home of all of us humans, started moving out of the African, uh, African uh, subcontinent through the Middle East, to the rest of the world. And then we had Homo habilis, Homo erectus, uh, Homo sapiens, and on this journey, there was a cro man, there was Neanderthals, and the other different developments. What is important to keep in mind is that there is no clear uh, lineage that you have a phase, uh, phases. Neander Neanderthals, developed to the large extent in parallel to the Homo erectus. And uh, there were elements of uh, parallel developments in Europe, in Asia, in Americas, in Australia. We will follow up with more detailed analysis in the writing. Therefore, you can consult these elements. And there are excellent resources, obviously, on the internet. Well, here is Lucy. Lucy, uh, our far, far predecessors. With, uh, with her husband, uh, who's, uh, uh, Lucy lived in, uh, in uh, Hadar, in nowadays uh, Ethiopia. And she probably, according to research of DNA, the advanced carbon research, she lived 3.2 million years uh, ago or uh, before, before Christ. And you can uh, find that more, most elements that we have in the terms of the size of the brain or uh, sort of uh, kinetics that we use 
can be only defined in that, that period. Let's move from Lucy and her husband to the uh, main developments which influence prehistoric diplomacy. In this diving deep or digging deep, if you view, views archeology, span there are the following elements that could give us the hints about the emergence of diplomacy. First is tools or technology. And this is our bridge to the discussion on diplomacy and technology. Development of tools require cognitive capabilities, require the cooperation and require, uh, require um, creativity. Obviously the first is a fire technology, lighting the fire and controlling fire. And there are researches that it happened 1.5 million years uh, BC. Then we have uh, Acheulean tools, again, 1.5 million years BC, where humans started developing, taking mainly stones, but cultivating them, preparing them for particular specific, specific uh, use. And then more sophisticated obsidian uh, tools, 700 years BC. What is interesting here to see from this, this, this type of tools is that they required imagination, they required uh, planning, and they required some sort of uh, usability, which was beyond immediate uh, picking up the stone from the nature next door and around you and using it. Therefore, cognitive capabilities of humans and some uh, archeologists argue even first uh, language capabilities started developing with these tools. Another major element is the development of trade. And we are getting here closer to diplomacy. As you will see through our, our journey, there is a close interplay between diplomacy and trade. For trade, you need engagement with the others. For trade, you need negotiation. You need trust. You need a ways to exchange goods at that time, mainly through the barter arrangement, very simple arrangement. How do we know that trade existed at that time? We know uh, basically from, uh, in this case, from uh, Kenya, that uh, there was a trade in the pigments, red color, black and red color pigments. And uh, archeologists argued that the place where they found those artifacts with the pigments, painting the pigments, were far removed from the places where basically they originated in the, in the, in the nature. There was somebody who had to move them across, for that time, distance of 50 miles or something, but for that time, long distance. Therefore, there was sort of understanding that there, there was element of uh, exchange. This use of pigments is also interesting that humans starting moving beyond utility. They wanted to uh, beautify their object. They started thinking about, about uh, beauty in the nature, and this is also important for the development of cognitive capacities. Closer to Europe, uh, you can find quite a few interesting developments on East-West trade in the pre uh, prehistory around the Danube River. Danube River, it was at that time, and is today one of the main transport and the communication water lines crossing from Germany to Romania, more or less uh, half of the Europe. And there was the famous Vincha culture, not very far from Belgrade, which developed quite a few sophisticated ways of trading and proves that goods were moved from far, uh, far distances. Therefore, this is the element main conclusion that trade existed at that time. In Asia, we have uh, proofs, archeological proofs of, uh, about trading in jade, especially Indonesia and Indian Ocean was at that, that time probably the major place for the trade movements between Africa and, uh, and the subcontinent. There, is, there are quite a few interesting findings on, the, on that movement of goods, but to just to summarize, the core conclusion from archaeologists is that when they find elements like pigments or goods or stones which do not belong to the, that particular area, 
But to some other uh, area, they argued that there was element of exchanges, of elements of trade, and probably the first roots of diplomacy, negotiation, engagement, and other, and other tools. In Americas, it was interesting that um, they find in the cylinders uh, from the Central, nowadays Central America, cacao coming from the, from the South America, which was used by tribes uh, in Central America, they find it on the jars, on the, on the, on the pots, and it's, it's now stored in the, the research that was done by Smithsonian Institute. Then we have trade, we have tools, we have trade, and we have uh, self-awareness. This is a painting from the Lascaux cave in Southern France, dating from the, for the 17,000 years BC before uh, our era. And why is this important? There are two elements. First, humans started ob observing and they started depicting the nature and the environment, cognitive tools and cognitive capacity, which is important for engagement, for negotiation, started developing. And they had also self-awareness. If you, those are proofs from Lasco and other caves, but we are bringing here Lasco cave, elements of self-awareness is important for developments of, the, of diplomacy. Therefore, so far, tools trade self-awareness. Two, uh, three great, uh, or two out of three greatest uh, um, archaeologists and anthropologists, Mo, uh, uh, Bronislaw Molinowski and, uh, and the mouse, uh, the Marcel mouse, uh, discovered the gift culture. Gift as a way of uh, exchanges, or as a way of building trust, engaging with the other communities. Not necessarily, um, they also, not necessarily reciprocal, but there are elements that were, uh, there were reciprocal exchanges of gifts. As we know, till today, gifts are important in diplomacy. And they, in this time, from the research of the Mouse and the Malinovsky, it shows that uh, our far, far predecessors wanted to develop links with the next tribe, with the neighbors, to engage possibly to trade in most cases, but also to solve, solve conflicts. Here are three thinkers, Malinowski, uh, and obviously uh, Claude Levis Strau, Strau uh, who, was, uh, who is uh, well known for his, uh, his research, uh, research Triste Tropique, and uh, also findings of these elements of diplomacy in, in his case, South, uh, South American, uh, South American uh, tribes. And you will receive in the follow-up, we'll share the elements about, about it. Intermarriages were important. And you, when you, will, you will see when we move through the history of diplomacy, the question of marriage, negotiation around marriages is one of the most important technologies of diplomacy. We have no findings that uh, uh, prehistorical people realized that inbreeding should be avoided. Therefore, they try to marry, to find the brides or the grooms from the other tribes. And around that, you have the full social interactions, including exchange of, of gifts and engagement on the, on the higher, higher level. Now, one element uh, which is underlying for this uh, tools of diplomacy, uh, trade, gifts, intermarriages, is the question of language. As you will see, we will argue next month when we start with the ancient diplomacy. The diplomacy start with, started with writing in the four millennium BC with the Sumerian invention of writing. Writing is important, but there are strong views that the diplomacy started with the use of language or development of the vocal cord and speech capabilities. And given the complexity of all of these developments that we explained, tools, trade, intermarriages, uh, we can argue probably that some elements of language 
existed uh, even before the, uh, before the ne Neanderthal 100,000 years ago, which we chosen as approximation, but probably it existed, it existed before. And on that elements, on the language and the writings, a lot of diplomatic dynamics will be developing throughout the history till our very moment. Those two elements remain the key, key of diplomacy and key of negotiation, key of engagement, building trust and the overall uh, diplomatic dynamics. Now in parallel to the, the survey of the history or digging for the roots of diplomacy and following their journey, we will add something uh, which is important for diplomacy. It is history of drinks. And history, what uh, our predecessor have been drinking while they were negotiating, engaging with each other uh, and lubricating in a way human interaction. We start today with water. And if you analyze the dynamics with pre, in prehistory, you can see that it is very often centered around the water. Access to free water, a proximity to the drinkable water, obviously, proximity of the, of the, of the lakes, rivers. And uh, with that, um, I will, uh, I will um, invite you to have a drink, this first drink on our journey. And also invite you to uh, answer one uh, puzzle for our next session, because next session we will focus on this drink. Those are cuneiforms and pictograms describing the drink that we will discuss next month when we'll start diving deep into the question of for Sumerian, Egyptian, Hittite, and other countries of the other civilizations of the so-called fertile crescent. Fertile crescent refers to the space between uh, Egypt on the, on the west, via nowadays Israel, uh, Syria, bit of Southern Turkey, up to the Mesopotamia. Therefore, this drink was discovered or invented, I would say discovered, uh, in, uh, in that, that period. Therefore, with the invitation to decipher our, uh, those uh, pictograms, uh, I would like also to summarize what we discussed today. We started diving deep into the history of diplomacy, diplomacy with lowercase d, diplomacy as a tool for solving conflicts between communities in a peaceful way, through engagement, representation and negotiation. We try to find the starting point, not with exact year or a millennium or whatever, but the points where probably diplomacy was created. And we depicted four, five main elements. We depicted emergence of tools, technology, early technology, trade, intermarriages, gifts, and language. As you can see from this presentation, the main uh, assumption or hypothesis of our journey that diplomacy remains the same in its core, why the tools of diplomacy have been changing since that time till today, this assumption, I would argue, holds and we managed today to prove this hypothesis and to provide elements that there is this long, 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 long transversal journey throughout the human history, which I would argue will continue in the future. Now, I will see with uh, my colleagues uh, if there are any comments or questions and I invite you to, to comment and then we develop further this discussion and, uh, and the idea. And special thanks to Diplo team, Mina Mudric, who is uh, archaeologist in our team who help uh, digging through the literature resources and other elements for the today's discussion. Uh, Marco, uh, please let me know if there is if there is anything uh, that uh, we should. 
Hi, Johan. And for the moment, there were not precise questions. I've also invited participants to in uh, interact directly and uh, join uh, via video and audio if they want to ask any precise questions. There were some reflections about the preservation of the Lascaux Caves, which has been limited since 1963 to preserve the, the internal atmosphere, since the paintings and the murals are very delicate but nothing not, not worthy for the moment. I would in, although invite once again participants to join and ask questions directly via video or audio. I, I guess that, uh, that this is the fact that you, you, uh, you agree with my uh, hypothesis and assumption that diplomacy in its core has not changed that much from the time of our far, far prehistorical predecessors. Yeah, we have a, this one assumption? question now. We have one uh, one question now. While uh, other participants reason on the on the reflection that you just read, raised, we have one uh, by by Ginger. Uh, she's uh, she's saying that she's very interested in the uh, elements of nonverbal diplomacy, especially in non-human species. So she's asking: Do we continue to learn anything from these diplomatic actions, especially from for nonverbal communications? As, and then we have uh, one, uh, one reflection by Dylan. The reference to gift giving a mouse reminded me of how gifts can wear used as obligations, putting pressure on the receiver to outdo the giver. And I think this is also an aspect that levi Stroh has also rightfully highlighted on, 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 his, uh, on his work. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's concluding by saying, and then I'll give you the floor, that remi this reminds him also of the potluck practice where goods are given and we're giving away and or destroyed to demonstrate the power of the tribe. Over to you, Yoman. Thank you. Let me just comment, uh, um, excellent question. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ginger, and thank you, Dylan. Uh, on Ginger's uh, general question, can we learn something from history. Again, coming from the region which has not been learning a lot from the history, unfortunately, I'm a bit skeptical about it. Therefore, we have to be careful not to make uh, direct uh, parallels and say, okay, here is the lesson uh, that we can copy and apply to our time. This is probably too far and I would say that would be risky because contexts are different. Contexts are evolving, changing and uh, we, you cannot cop, uh, copy blueprint from the history. But what we can learn, first, we can be a bit more humble as a humanity, realizing that humanity, very sophisticated humanity, not that different from us in many respects, existed long, long time ago. And that what we are passing now while discussing artificial intelligence or data, People discuss in different contexts in the past. This is the first point. Second point, which is, I would say, personally very important for me, is that we really uh, create a solid, informed discussion about interplay between human nature and diplomacy and political society. I am afraid that we are living now the phase of fulfillment of our uh, prophecies if we argue that humans are egoistic and they are just ready to fight, uh, we are basically calling for this type of action and this type of behavior. Now, let's, let's stay assured. I don't, I'm not naive that uh, we can have create utopian society where people will just cooperate. No, but like as happens in the Balkans, well, just 30 or 40 years ago, the same people had potentials to cooperate, to engage to show empathy, to build something and to fight. Now the context in which, which is created in particular by political elites and media is extremely important. And I think that lesson from history about the context which you create is probably uh, highly, highly important and the understanding of the social economic uh, aspects of this context, humbleness, Revisiting the, the key assumption of the modern political theory that we are bad by nature and three, understanding the context and diving uh, deeper into layers of the context, social, economic, psychological. Uh, second point, Dylan, yes, uh, the, there is a lot of dynamics around the gifts. When I studied law, 
long time ago in the last century. Well, you see, time flies. Uh, one counterintuitive element for, for me was that there is a need for the contract for gifts. I understand that gifts as a birthday gift, you just receive the gift and you're happy and you're thankful for somebody who thought of you. But in law, in civil law, there is a contract uh, which is so-called gift contract, which you have to sign. And this exactly points to what you mentioned, is this question of obligation that gifts brings certain level of obligation and it can be sign of power, as you said, breaking the uh, gift in front of the person. And for there are again layers around gifts and probably archeologists, my colleagues, historians of diplomacy should focus more on that element of the, of the social, political, economic context in, of the exchanges of gifts. And we have excellent uh, starting point with uh, Marcel Maus and Bronisel Malinowski. Over to you, Marco. Thank you, Jovan. In the meantime, we had some uh, quite some uh, other reactions and comments, and I will just uh, read them out loud now. We have one participant that has pointed out um, and would like to reiterate that cooperation between entities goes back to the origins of life. Actually, our DNA is a mix of many types of entities. Then Joelma is asking if uh, you, Jovan, could elaborate on the methods we use to carry out research on prehistoric diplomacy. And the third question, uh, which is more, uh, more of a comment from Daniel, I think we have learned a lot from animals how to practice improved diplomacy, but I have questions regarding that animals were the first to begin and teach the human being about diplomacy. I personally believe that diplomacy is, is a human invention. And uh, yeah. Uh, the, the last comment is that he or she who asked, he doesn't believe that diplomacy is human invention. No, it's precisely that. I, I believe that diplomacy is a human intervention. Okay, okay. And then we have one last question from, uh, from Liz. Re regarding gift uh, giving, this has become a formality between heads of state governments, but also, um, as Marco said, an obligation, especially for those who are tasked with thinking of suitable gifts for their bosses to offer. Does anyone think there is still a need for this exchange in diplomacy? She has her doubts. Okay, let me start with this last question and I will bring uh, again an important element. We tend to think about diplomacy as a functional ex exchange. And you really, if you see the functional approach to diplomacy, you may say, why do we need exchange of gifts? Why we don't just sit around the table and agree about peace treaty or compensation or whatever it's at the, at the table. My, concern is that we push too far this rational element in the, in the not only in diplomacy, but also, also in society, uh, considering more or less society as a project management. And I think we are living the phase where we see the limits of the project management. And I have a theory that it came at the end of the, of the Cold War, where basically societies moved from the, especially Western society, from the, from the virtue element to Fukuyama's end of the history. And okay, uh, although Fukuyama later on, he backtracked on the, his view of the back of the history, but we became societies of the project management. Now back to the gifts, Big gifts are lubricators. They're going to the deeper, not only to the, our logos, not only to our ethos, but also to pathos, to the, Stomach. Well, I'm not speaking about gifts as a question of corruption, but gifts is a gesture. Gift uh, is also a very active relation. You think of the other side on the other personality. Therefore, I think true gifts, maybe not necessarily gifts, but other elements, we have to recreate that human deeper understanding of diplomacy in our society. Moving beyond obsession of pure rationality. Obviously we have to use our logos and our rationality, but also being aware of our values, our credibility, our sort of ethos and our guts feeling, our pathos. If we ignore that, we're going to face the music as we have been facing, I would say last five to 10, 10 years. That's on that, but it's a broader societal issue. I think the first question was on DNA 
in, uh, in cooperation. And it's related to the second question on the research. I didn't go into the DNA research and advanced scientific methods, but what is going on on the level of the microbes about gems in our body and around us is in a way diplomacy or fight in itself. I'm sure that many of you read the Jerry Diamonds, the gems, guns and steel, and there are now more and more research about this question of DNA. Is it proning us to cooperation or conflicts? How microbes, and we are now fighting one of very, very nasty microbe as a society, COVID-19 virus. And there are those layers which are, which are even, even deeper. Also the question of the human uh, cognition, human brain. Uh, I stayed away today uh, out of it. First of all, it is a bit of my, out of my depth currently to go meaningful in that discussion, uh, but also it requires the session in itself. Therefore, on that biological level on DNA, I think there are more and more arguments that there is very busy life on that side, and there are more elements towards cooperation. Second question, how we are going to continue our research? The main purpose of this series of lectures, masterclass lectures in our discussion is to uh, raise awareness about this long journey of diplomacy. We are not going to dive deep into prehistory, but I invite you who are today in this session to continue this research. We can help, we can help with our expertise, but we'll be moving already next month to the ancient era to Sumers, to Egyptian, uh, ancient Egypt, to Hittite and other civilizations. But as our caravan is moving, we'll be keeping engagement and discussion in this case of prehistory. And what I suggest, you can find the address, Mina's or my address, drop us an email and see, for example, if you're interested to write a blog post, if you're interested to join research, if you have any other proposal on this journey, while we are clear about the journey, we are not uh, rigid about the way how this journey will, uh, will uh, conduct. And uh, the key is to follow all great Africans saying, if you move, want to move fast, move alone. If you want to move far, uh, move with others. And this is invitation for all of you. Marco, there was a third question and maybe uh, I think I answered fourth, first and second. You will remind me about third question or any other comments or question. Yes, Jovan, exactly. There was a third question, which is connected to two uh, comments that have emerged while you were answering the first two. And the last comment was actually from Daniel, and it was um, it was um, reflecting on on uh, to what extent diplomacy is a human intervention, and how much we can learn from animals, and the debate got a little bit on also thinking what is the difference between the practices that uh, animals put into place and we do. So Daniel's comments was that, and position was that he personally believes that diplomacy is a human intervention, to which uh, he got answered by one of the participants that uh, uh, all animals, including humans, have had some sort of diplomacy from the beginning. You can see how animals respect each other on um, territories and have some protocols in their undertakings. Only that humans have perfected the art. So there is a form of, uh, let's say, um, original diplomacy that um, that animals put into place, but humans have perfected and developed the art. And then another follow-up question by Deirdre. Uh, I have a concern about human arrogance. How different from animals are we really? Back to you. Well, we'll have to ask Frank Deval, who did, uh, did research on chimpanzee. Uh, and uh, if, if they're arrogant, but uh, during his interview and preparation for interview with him, he, he really brought so many interesting things about the hierarchy, about, for example, the role of the elderly female, not young female, elderly female who intervenes into the conflicts and basically bring the usually alpha male or uh, males bring together and say, hey guys, calm down, sit around and let's, let's say resolve the conflict. But I, we didn't ask him about arrogance, 
in the uh, in the chimpanzee communities or generally primates communities but it was an interesting reflection on the on the, this conflict resolution on empathy the question of empathy feeling of fairness and we will share with you links in the chat to both his interview on diplomacy and the primates but also his excellent uh, ted talks uh, uh, with the summary of his research and you can see real photos and images how for example chimpanzees react to unfairness we have some other reactions Jovan. Uh, if you if you just no, uh, go ahead. Would like me yes to read them read them out loud uh, one uh, is uh, is asking is there evidence of diplomacy uh, whatever diplomacy uh, whatever form diplomacy takes. Um, is there an evidence of diplomacy between the Homo sapiens and um, the other different human species prior to them? The, the other comment uh, is uh, about gift giving. In a transactional framework, one does not need trust or gifts. However, if the agreement is about the future, which is rooted in trust, you need gifts to reveal your intention. And then we have another, a last reflection. I'm not an historian by any means, but the fact that religion flourished in the early civilizations would be an indication to me that diplomacy was a tool of sorts. The very fact that a group of people would elect a religious figure to speak on their behalf is a proof of that. How else could that be achieved without diplomacy? The ability to gather a large group of people uh, to believe one thing and not to do war over opposing ideals would in many ways be the definition of what you've asked. Over to you. Marco, I'm an old man um, and you have now to, to, uh, to uh, I, can, I can start with the third question, but you will help me the first, the first two comments or questions if you can just, uh, just sum summarize them. Uh, the third question, uh, we stayed uh, on this point with uh, from a question, I, we may say religion or a magic or the rituals where basically people had to cope with the human predicament and mainly with the death. Uh, the question of the finite, uh, finite element in, uh, in, their, their, in our life journeys. And I would say that has not changed since, since that time. What we can find as a sort of a elements of a proto-religions are those elements of a, in the cave paintings or elements of rituals, which are important for a, for religion, and those are those are elements. But we can say now, based on the current research on the on the Amazonian tribes and the, in the tribes in the Malinesia and the Polynesia, we can we can see that there were some sort of elements of a, we can say religion or uh, or magic or uh, voodoo practices. You can put it in that way. Now, link to diplomacy is important. Diplomacy is about negotiating with each other. A religion in that phase, and I will not extend to the to the current moment, is also a negotiation with a transcendent individual or group through shamans, through rituals. Therefore, there is that element of negotiation of trying to please ultimate power to give you the, the favorable treatment, luck, extension of life, fortune, whatever was at that time important for the, for the human beings. Now I can recall the second question was on gifts. Yes, and the gift is of always about uh, building trust. And this is why I argue that the gift has so many elements of uh, <clears throat> layers of, of cultural relevance, political relevance, economical and, and philosophical, philosophical relevance. And if you have young students and young colleagues who want to do research, I would advise them to do it on it because you will discover a lot about our current era. And I think the first question was about Homo sapiens and uh, proves. Uh, that diplomacy started. You will see next week, next month, I'm sorry, that there are some proofs from, from Sumerian, uh, ancient Egypt and Hittite culture, concrete proofs of diplomacy, like treaties, like Talamarna letters, like even the invention of writing, the sort of um, 
story around invention of writing is a story about diplomacy. And those are elements which are more concrete. When it comes to the prehistory, we cannot say that we have correct proofs of uh, institutional diplomacy, diplomacy with uppercase D. All what we discussed today are building blocks for diplomacy as a way of solving, peacefully solving conflicts. And we can find many of this. From the Frank de Waal, from the uh, chimpanzee uh, world, from animal kingdom, to the, as we discussed, trade, uh, tools, intermarriages, language and gifts. But not, we don't have any institutional, uh, as far as I know, any institutional proof of diplomacy with uppercase D. Over, Marco. Voice. Yes, thank you, Jovan. You have indeed recalled all the all the three questions. There has been there have been quite a few follow up questions. One of them uh, from uh, Marcel asking uh, about a specific case now. How do you think about internal diplomacy between armed groups and government? And quoting the case of Mali, showing the long term conflict between Tuaregs and the government. So between different entities, even within within the same uh, nation, state, and territory. And then another consideration: uh, next to exchange, we have also shared intentionally. We need to act. Yeah, uh, we need to act together. Here, shamans and other um, figures reduce diversity of options toward towards a joint intention. Excellent. Uh, Marcel, first, uh, I have to make a caveat. I'm not expert on Mali. I follow the developments. I was sad when the Timbuktu was, uh, was attacked as, uh, as an important uh, storage of the written, uh, written memory of the, of the African cultures. And as you will see throughout our journey, I've been pushing my colleagues from uh, Africa, I don't know if you're coming from the region, to say more about oral tradition, to to even do a small research project, maybe if there are foundations or, uh, or universities here, to, uh, to depict that uh, huge and very important tradition of African societies in uh, engaging, solving uh, conflicts. And this is very, very important. Uh, as I put the caveat, I am uh, I'm very careful about applying directly lessons from the history. Circumstances, contexts are very specific, but we can uh, make a building blocks, start with the trust. Sometimes making, ma making millimetric uh, moves forward, is it happening in the Balkans, unfortunately? The war in the Balkans ended in 30 years, societies are still divided. But that small steps are extremely, extremely, extremely uh, uh, important. And that, uh, that, unfortunately, I cannot give you recipe, but maybe some of this thinking from the history can inspire, can inspire engagement uh, uh, in, uh, in Mali. I'm always for negotiation, for engagement, and I'm one of those who are ready to engage regardless of values and uh, uh, have a not necessarily just peace, but having just a peace, because just peace can be enemy of the having a peace. And the time, give time a chance is important in resolving this type of conflict. Aldo, thank you. Yes, intentionality. Intentionality as a shared thinking and a great engagement. Intentionality that I may know as individual, what Aldo is thinking now while he's writing this message. This is the simplest intentionality. Those of you who are playing chess, it's one of well-known games where you, you think about intentionality or three or four levels in a rather mathematical format. But what Aldo is arguing here is a need for shamans today. People who will, in a reasonable way, they won't be shamans, they will be politicians, most likely diplomats, pick up the intentionality. Uh, and uh, in some cases, especially when it's come to the, 
crucial and engagement, uh, reducing diversity of opinion toward joint intention. And this is a delicate balance, obviously. Diversity of opinion is good as an element of freedom of expression, engagement, but it is also blocking the action, can create the conflicts. You can go now to social media and see how simplified diversity of opinion without joint intentionality can create more problems than uh, solutions. Therefore, yes, Aldo, strong, uh, strong endorsement for your comments. And we have to find the shamans for, the, for our era. If you have any idea, please write the blog post. I know it will be a very interesting blog post. Marco. Yes, Ivan, we have one last comment and I think then we need to wrap the event up. Time is, is running. The, the topic is very interesting, but we have to fit all this discussion in, in one hour. Uh, one comment from Maria. It can be said that diplomacy and the exchange of objects, gifts, money, etc., is a means to finally achieve a specific objective, which can then be ass assessed to um, can be the access to resources and ultimately survival and dominance. So, gift as a way to uh, achieve a specific objective. I think we've touched upon this already a little bit. Marco, let me just comment on, on that. What I know from the, from the let's say, Malinowski's uh, research on Argonauts of the, of the Western Pacific is that those gifts are not transactional. It doesn't mean of achieving specific objective, but setting this, what Aldo said, joint intentionality and basically <clears throat> engaging, creating the space that you have a trust capacity, you have a space, you have infrastructure to solve the conflicts when they arise, because they will arise. This is the nature of human society. The way it is less transactional, I would say gift as a transactional, it's more bribe or uh, basically, basically direct solving the problem. But here are gifts as a contribution to trust building. Over. It was actually the, uh, uh, the, the, the last question, we have a very last one, but then three minutes and we, we should close the end. Surely if it's transactional, it isn't by definition a gift. Well, this question reflects on what you just highlighted, I guess, that the gift itself, it does not encompass a simple transactional, I give you one thing for you to give me back another thing, but it's a broader concept, a framework also of exchanges and cooperation. But I'll let you elaborate on that and then we, we don't have any more comments. Thank you. I can see a few. I now switched off the chat, and I can see uh, uh, a few comments from uh, from Aldo on, on the Mali and uh, on the Daniel uh, Tanker from Ethiopia. Daniel, we need to learn more from Ethiopia. You have uh, not only Hadar when Lucy was found, but uh, other places where um, Ethiopia can contribute. Uh, the only sub-Saharan uh, Africa, well, Timbuktu uh, uh, civilization is also another example with the written, uh, written uh, tradition. And uh, definitely I had the comments from uh, Joelma Almeida Vansina was a reference and please share these references with us. And let's make sure that as we move with this journey, we learn also of uh, other cultures. Most of the written history of diplomacy is related to European diplomacy and diplomacy with a capital D. Vienna Congress, uh, Metternich, uh, Richelieu, um, other great Churchill, great negotiators. But if you want to have the global diplomacy as modus operandi for solving conflicts, we need also uh, global, global understanding and global inputs. Therefore, here is a strong, strong call for all colleagues, especially coming from the other regions and in particular from Africa to contribute more to this debate and uh, to join this caravan through email, blog post, comment, podcast, the f don't worry about the form. And uh, that's, the, that's basically the key message and that we're looking forward to continuing uh, with the topic of our next month discussion, which is on the diplomacy of the ancient world Maybe mainly in the fertile, uh, fertile crescent between Sumers on the east and Babylon, nowadays Iraq, part of Iran, via Syria, southern Turkey to the Egypt, ancient Egypt. And it will be a very, very interesting journey where the 
letter D on diplomacy will start uh, moving from the lowercase d to, to the capital. And for the last uh, part of the session, you will have to decipher uh, the, our pictograms that uh, we shared and to learn what will be the drink of that, that session. And for those of you who like that drink, you may bring it. I will bring the drink and we'll uh, cheer at the end of the session. Thank you for uh, excellent comments, questions. And uh, I'm personally very excited about this journey and I hope uh, we'll get the new insights, not only about the past, but also about our current moment and the future. Thank you, bye-bye. I bring you for the news as quickly as